Sunshine. Look at that. I'm going to start this post off with a bit of a rant. And it's about being forced to pay for stuff when you are okay with the free version. And this has been triggered by a specific thing that has happened today, this morning. So you will notice that down in the corner, the right hand, so down there, there is a logo. They call it a watermark. It's a logo for Power Director. And the reason it's there is because I use the free version of the software. And if I'm going to use the free version of the software, I don't mind being a bit of an advertising banner. I've got what, for me, is a good product for nothing. I'm okay with that. I know that some of you are irritated by the logo, the watermark, but it enables me on a zero budget for this channel to be able to do more than just point and shoot. Because I do cuts, I do time lapse, just to make things a bit more interesting and so that videos aren't too long and all that sort of thing. And this morning I got the latest update from PowerDirector, which I've installed. And then I completed a video, which I wanted to upload. And as usual, whenever they do an update, they seem to tweak things and move them around and then you can't find anything. And they have moved the logo, the watermark, so that instead of it being right at the bottom in the corner as a big logo but not desperately irritating, they've moved it up the screen. So it's now a third from the bottom rather than right at the bottom. So they've stuck it right in your eye line now. And it just ruins the picture. And I know why they've done this. It's because they want to force people off the free version and to pay for it. And I get it. They're a company. They need to make money if they're going to keep going. And if I had chosen to pay for this, it would have been of my own volition. But now I'm in a situation where they are forcing me to pay for the product because now the videos just look awful. So they've bullied me into a corner where I either now have to put up with that incredibly irritating logo, which everyone's going to hate, or I pay. Now, it's not a groundbreaking amount of money. I've had a look. They have a little sale on until the 9th of June. It's 25% off and it's going to cost me £48. Otherwise, I can pay £17.99 a month. £48 for a whole year isn't bad. But I would like to have made that choice myself. Not because I've been forced to do it. And that really irritates me. Because now I'm going to be giving money to a company whose practices I don't like in, in that instance. Now, there is nowhere else I can go for software that's as good. I've tried other companies um, and this just really worked for me. I found it really easy to use. I've had others before and really struggled to be able to use the software. This just works really well for me. For an idiot like me who doesn't know how to do anything to do with video editing, editing I've managed to teach myself from scratch using this software. And I don't want to change now. So now, 
I'm gonna have to pay for it. So if you are glad that probably by the time you see this, I would have paid for the product and you won't have to have any watermark at all. And if that makes you really happy, do donate. You can donate on coffee, on PayPal, um, and via super thanks <laughs> and contribute to my 48 pounds a year if you wish because I can promise you YouTube is not paying for that uh, at least I can claim it as a business expense but as I'm already below the personal allowance every year I'm not it's not really gonna save me anything it doesn't make any difference so do donate if you uh, if you wish to <laughs> it would really help towards that 48 pounds for the year which I think works out at something like £3.90 a month so pay me £3.90 and you've paid for a month of not having to look at that irritating watermark anyway so that's that and it's it's bucking a trend that I've seen so one of the other sites that I use and have been using the free version of for years and years is Ancestry and you do get quite limited things on Ancestry when you take the free version but it's doable and I would guess that they're now running short on people who are willing to subscribe every year because there's there's only a limited number of people that need to keep buying Ancestry and what I have noticed now is that they have removed some of the very basic free stuff from what I can see which makes it getting close to unusable now and it's because they want me to pay for it now I'm not going to pay for that one I don't need it I use a variety of genealogy sites so I don't need all of what Ancestry provides me and my dad has the subscription so every three months when I go down there if there are things that I do need to look at that are on the paid version I just use his one uh, so that's not a big deal but it's just I can see this happening a lot more where as companies get tighter and tighter financially and need to make more money they are just going to force people to pay for things that were free before and I get you know if if you're getting the free version of something it's not going to be as good I get that and I was happily putting up with that logo in the corner at the bottom because it was at the bottom and it wasn't horrific and I didn't mind showing that watermark because I was getting the free version but now they've shifted it up into that the top of that lower half it looks excuse my language, absolutely shite. Really annoying. And it just annoys me that they are forcing you to pay for it. Mm, really, really bugs me. And, you know, if you've watched my channel enough you will know that I love a free hack I like getting stuff for free I have a very tight budget you know my income's low my outgoings are even lower and the reason that I am able to live on a low income is because I don't pay through the nose for a ton of stuff um, I've had similar problems with my internet lately they're working on the masts getting rid of 3G and the signal is getting a bit ropey. I think that a lot of the problem actually is that there are just so many people using the masts now. I've noticed that um, if I need to do internet heavy work like uploading to YouTube or anything like that, if I, um, if I do everything first thing in the morning, it flies along it's great anything after about three o'clock and it's can grind to a halt which I blame on the kids have just come out of school um, so people are going home you can see the build-up in the traffic that there are people coming out of work even at that time and by the time you get to about 
four five o'clock um you've got almost no ability to use the internet at all so i'm just learning to change my routines around i've had a look at getting broadband the prices are a joke the contracts are long and the small print says that if they want to put the charge up mid contract they will and i don't want that it's not it's not going to change my life sufficiently to be worth paying 20 plus pounds extra a month out on my budget so i'm hanging on on that one but again yeah i mean it's different with my provider my provider is smarty they don't do broadband or wi-fi um they only do data plans so it's not like they're forcing me to get wi-fi um and I don't want to end up in that situation where I have to because I don't really want it. And, you know, having to take out a minimum 18 month contract um, on something that may not even be that much better because I looked at the, at the, the speed limits on the lowest price ones and they weren't that amazing, really. When my 4G is working well, the speeds were the same as the Wi-Fi. And I wouldn't say that my 4G whizzes along, but it's doable. So my videos at the moment are a bit out of sync. So I have some things that I recorded um, a few weeks ago, which are further down the playlist because you can schedule your posts. And I tend to, I'm trying to schedule every other day at the moment because I have a bit of a backlog. So I've got posts scheduled for, I think, almost another two weeks. So you'll see some, I think, without logos, some... You might see one with an annoying logo. I might go back and re-edit that if I buy the software because I haven't uploaded that to the website yet. And then you'll see others where it's the old logo right down the bottom. Um, but there won't be many of those if I go ahead and buy the software. I don't think I've got a choice. I think I'm going to have to do it because it just looks absolutely dreadful. And, yeah, you might think I'm a bit of a miser for not paying out £48 a month. £48 a year, sorry. Um, but, ugh. anyway, so I'm here for my Wednesday morning clean. <sighs> I've got another hack I want to talk about later. It is a free hack. It's a DIY hack. Um, and it's something I need to test out, but I'll talk about that another time. At least that will be a freebie and that will, that freebie will enable me to not have to pay for something which um, would be an occasional use. Anyway, I've got to go. Um, I'm going to go and get this clean out of the way. And then Wednesday, done, already. <laughs> this afternoon, taking myself out on a little walk. quite windy so I thought I'd test out my new wind muffler. I'm using the one that goes onto the headphones. See if, see if it still works <laughs> and how well it works because it's windier now than it was earlier. I have no reason to be out. I've been busy doing admin and editing YouTube and all sorts of things this morning, but um, even when I'm really busy, if I don't get outside, I feel like I haven't done anything. And of course, if I don't go out and walk, I'm less likely to drink the water that I'm supposed to drink every day. So here I am. I think the traffic noise is gonna be more of a problem than the wind today. But, uh, 
we could think of this as another experimental video. Testing the new low-tech tech and it is pretty windy so this should be a good test for the microphone muffler. So I won't know till I get home and have a look. <laughs> I feel like I've achieved quite a lot this week. Sorted out my software for my editing, which I know I moaned about how to pay for, but it feels quite good. Because I have a slightly better version of what I had before. I mean, I've paid all that money just to get rid of a logo, really. The software doesn't look any different to how it looked before, apart from that. But I feel like that's a decision well made. It's good software. I couldn't really upload good or better YouTube videos without it, so I don't really begrudge it, especially when you think that it's only $3.99 per month. Not exactly bank breaking. Oh. Sun's out. Lots of noise here, so I'm sandwiched between a busy road, the wind, and this road is a bit of a wind tunnel, so this is going to be a good test. And on the other side, there's a motorway. So I don't know what this little mic thing is going to do, but happy to give it a go. It looked like it was going to rain, but now we have blue sky and sun. That's pretty good. Question is, can you hear any wind? This is a really good test, actually. Can you, yeah, I mean, you can see how windy it is. reduces traffic noise as well that'll be even better but maybe it will I mean I don't know it would be handy if it did because I live in quite a built up area so the traffic's a real irritation if you're doing stuff locally I found a new mascot I have all sorts of mascots the things that I found he was just sitting on the curbway in the gutter I don't know what it is it looks like a Hello Kitty oh it is a Hello Kitty it's never into Hello Kitty So this has turned into quite a nice walk. See on one side, I'm on this side is all the trees. Oh wow. Look at this elderflower. makes me want to pick more elderflowers. I've seen so many since I bottled mine. <laughs> and I don't have any room to do anymore. So I've discovered a slight issue with this mic which is that sometimes because I've got it up against me here it uh, 
the muffler slips off the microphone and along the wire so I'm going to sew it tight to stop it from moving around that'll be easy enough to do and presuming this test works this is like the ultimate wind test for this so if this works um, it'll be worth doing I'm going to stop recording now so that I can drink my water because I haven't had any water yet catch you later it's another Sunday morning I didn't do a Tuesday haul last week because there wasn't anything in the shops and in fact it's not very good at the moment all told so none of the deals were really good deals today but anyway we've got what we've got so we have salad tomatoes two packs these were 95p each down to 71p loads of tomatoes uh, I got two tins of red kidney beans. These are going to go into the stores. These were 69p each down to 51. Dented tins as always. They can go in the cupboard. They will last ages. I also have more carrots. These were 65p down to 48p. They're, all, they're in quite a good nick actually, which is unusual. And the other thing I bought... I haven't bought eggs in ages and again I only buy eggs when they're on discount and you'll either get loads of eggs or no eggs and just no eggs forever. So eggs keep forever. They keep forever in the fridge. So I've just opened my last box of eggs and I last bought eggs at the end of January and they're fine. And I know they're fine because I eat them and nothing happens. Um, so I've decided to buy one box. It's a box of 10. They're called Big Yokers. They were the only ones on deal today and I thought shall I shan't I but I might not see eggs again for ages because I haven't seen any good deals since I bought those ones in January. Uh, these were £3.20 because they are not Saver brand or own brand and they were down to £1.60 which isn't amazing but given that it takes me a long time to get through eggs so the last time I bought eggs I bought I think it was three boxes and they've lasted me from January to now which is the beginning of the second week of June so these will probably last ages I used to bake with eggs I used to put eggs in my cakes but when I've been researching and looking for more for cheaper ways to bake and then finding uh, a cake recipe that didn't have eggs in it which was really nice I just don't bother baking with cakes anymore so I tend to do like scrambled egg I might do egg on toast um, the odd fried egg things like that uh, but I don't like <clears throat> I don't use them a lot so just buying one 10 box like that they're not that cheap but they'll last me a long time so that is my haul for Sunday. That whole lot cost me £4.52 and as usual I'll put a thing up the top there. Uh, <laughs> Some of the comments I'm getting at the moment, I'm pretty sure they're just attention seekers but who knows. So um, I regularly get random comments saying, uh, stop being so frugal and just enjoy your life. Well, for a start, your version of enjoying life is probably very different to mine. And it's very much that, it, it, it's like a short-sighted comment, because it suggests you should just blow all your money now and not worry about the consequences. So I've heard people say, don't bother saving for retirement, uh, just enjoy your money now in the assumption you're going to die before you retire and I've watched um, like these financial podcasts and things like that and there are people who actually
don't save for retirement because they're planning on being dead before they retire. And I don't know how you work that out. It's like saying, I'm just going to eat myself stupid now and I'm not going to worry about the health consequences. At some point, it's going to catch up with you. So I could say, yeah, sod it. I'm just going to blow all my money now. I'm going to spend what I've got. I'm going to spend my savings. I'm not going to worry about anything for the future. I'm just going to enjoy the money now. So what happens in five years when my car dies and I can't buy a new car? because A, I can't get credit for one, and B, I didn't save up for one. I am now stranded. If I don't have a car, I can't go and see family, I can't get out of town. Um, it's just ridiculous. What if at my next rent renewal, the rent goes really high, or the landlord says he's selling up? What if I haven't got the money for a new deposit? Um, or to pay the six months rent in advance or a year because I've heard that that some rental places are doing that now they want a year in advance and what if I can't afford to pay for a removal company to come pick up my stuff because now I have more stuff or I can't afford to put stuff into storage because I blew all the money what happens if I get sick and I can't work for three months and I blew my emergency savings what if I get to 65 and my health isn't as good as I wanted it to be and I can't work and now I have nothing but the state pension and I, in fact, I won't even get that 65 and I'm screwed. So they're really really stupid comments because you have to plan for the future. You can't just say oh, I'm just going to live for the now. Living for the now is what's got us all into the trouble that we're in. Living for the now is why we have so much debt and why so many people are living hand to mouth and why people are using food banks and people are homeless because we're not taught to plan ahead properly. You might think that not spending your money now makes life boring or uninteresting and that depends entirely on what you think is an interesting way to live. If you think having the latest car updated every three years and going on three or four holidays a year is your idea of fun then good for you um i kind of think that i have a bit more substance to me than that um so i just find it really weird that I don't know, I, I'm guessing they're attention seekers and they don't mean it because why on earth would you want to sabotage your future for the sake of a few takeaways now. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, now I am older, so this might be coming from someone who's a lot younger and, and certainly until, let's say, eight years ago, I was the same. I didn't go mad, but I wasn't saving in the way that I should. And because I wasn't being more careful with my money, I had eaten into savings that I should have been putting aside for other things. I'm trying to undo some of that damage. So over the last 15 years, I've had I've had two incomes of cash that I, that I wouldn't normally have had. So one was a divorce settlement and the other was an inheritance. And I didn't go mad and say, oh, I'm going to buy a brand new car, I'm going to blow this, I'm going to blow that. I put it into savings. But over the last eight or nine years, and particularly since COVID, I have dipped into those savings a lot just to support me. Because business went downhill, and until I found all my side hustles, I didn't have any other income. So I blew most of it, well, not most of it, I blew a chunk of it on day-to-day -day living. And so that wasn't even extravagant enjoyment. That was paying the rent, paying bills and putting food on the table. And it gave me that breathing space to work out a plan, but it went on for too long. So for about three years, I was just topping up the shortfall with savings and not thinking about it. And it wasn't until last year that I started to think, well, I, I have no retirement fund at all. I have nothing. I have my savings, but they're all in easy access accounts, so they're not really earning anything. And, you know, I hit 50 this year. No retirement fund at 50. You know, the chances are 
I'm going to live into retirement. Maybe I won't. I don't know. If I don't, then someone else gets the money. Who cares? But saying that, oh, well, I might not hit retirement, I might be dead by then, I'm just going to go mad and blow it on a, on a fancy cruise or something, is a really stupid way to plan your future. Now, if I find out in six months that I've got a health condition that means I'm going to be dead in a year, yeah, I'm taking that money, I'm going on that cruise. Because I have no one to leave it to. But just to presume that oh, well, the future will sort itself out, I'm not going to worry about it, is a really stupid way to live. And that's why we have so many people just struggling so badly. Because we didn't think in advance. Now, I'm not in a very comfortable situation. Um, I've got out of the worst of it, and I'm repairing the damage from some of what I've done over the years. But it's not, you know, it's not going to be something that I don't worry about. And I don't worry about it, I'm just, because I've planned and I know what to expect and I understand how things work, I don't worry about it because I understand it. So don't just think, oh well, who cares about the future, I'm just going to blow it all now. Don't do that, because somewhere along the line you are really going to pay the price for that. And you don't know how your life is going to change. You might think, oh I'm going to be dead by 40, as some of these people do. And then you meet the love of your life. And then you want to have children. And then you want to buy a house. And suddenly you, you, you're, you're planning for your children to look after you in retirement because you have nothing. And that's one thing on the, the, uh, the YouTube channel Financial Audit, the chap who runs it, Caleb Hammer, it's one of the things that he always says. So you're... You're living a bad life now, you're blowing all your money, you have no money, you have children. So basically you're expecting your children to look after you when you're old. Why would you put that responsibility onto them? They have enough struggles of their own. So that's an interesting one to consider. If you have kids and you are not prioritising your financial future, are you happy that you're passing the burden on to your children? Thought for the day. I have just been to my friend's funeral, standing room only in the chapel, it was lovely, so many nice interesting people and it was really nice to hear about her life, all the things I didn't know and I went to the, they had a, a closed off section of a, a local pub afterwards and I went because I didn't know anybody apart from her husband but I wanted to go and just you know have a chat with him and then because it, you couldn't get near him at the church because everybody was there and then I thought and I kind of hung around like away from straight because I didn't know anybody apart from him and people don't always come up and say hello or how did you know so and so so I kind of hung around for a bit and eventually I got adopted by four ladies. Really funny, interesting people. I recognised, I think two of them from around and about town because everyone lives locally here. One lady I did recognise very well. Uh, so now I can put a face to the name. And one of the other ladies took my number so, I don't know, maybe we'll meet up again at some point. But it was really nice to be able to, to meet some local people. And that's what it is, really. I mean, I've lived here for such a long time and don't really know anybody. I lost my closest friend in the area last year. She died. And now my other friend's gone, who I knew here. And I have, like, people scattered around, so I have cousins who live about half an hour away but we don't see him that often and I'm not the problem is because I'm such a massive introvert I don't need it I don't need to meet up with people every weekend I don't need to have lots of conversations and all that so I'm quite difficult to pin down and I like it when I do go out and I can feign being the social butterfly easily 
but I find it quite exhausting. So it's now half past four. There was a buffet spread on, so although it's been quite a long day, I don't need to worry about food. And I think I wasn't going to go, it's Tuesday, and I wasn't going to go and do my clean this evening. But actually I think I will, just to keep the day going as normal. And tomorrow being Wednesday, I have a three hour clean anyway. And though it's not too bad to do two cleans on one day, I like to break things up. So that's the end of an era. And now her husband has to kind of build his life alone. Although, you know, they're all locals. They're all from around here. So he's got lots of friends and family locally on his doorstep. So he'll be okay. But it's just all that adjustment, you know. They were together 34 years. That's a long time to then suddenly have somebody not there. And so quickly as well. Scary stuff. So maybe I've just made some new friends, just from this one little social outing. Oh, and in case you're wondering why I'm dressed in bright colours, we were requested to wear bright colours. Which I think is quite nice for a funeral, because it's a celebration of life. As well as a sad time. But she wanted bright colours, so she got a lot of bright colours today. You could tell that you were in the right place because everybody had bright colours and patterns and it was really nice. It's Wednesday morning and Yesterday I did end up going to do my clean in the evening but there was somebody still working there in one of the offices so and he said oh I'll be at your way in a minute just got a couple of emails to send I finished cleaning the rest of the whole building at half seven and he was still there on a work call and I think he is one of those people I think the whole office structure is you keep working, there are no set hours. He was on this work call at half seven when I left. And I've had texts from the chap who runs, like owns the business occasionally, just ask, just saying, or oh, um, can you just do an extra little bit of cleaning here because I've done this or we're changing an office around, can you just have a, have a go around there? But he'll send them at like 10 o'clock at night. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer that. So I don't because do me a favour, you know, limits. Um, so I said, well, I'll come back tomorrow and do your office. I mean, it's literally over the road. It'll take me 10 minutes. It'll keep you busy. Um, I hadn't done the full allocated time for the clean, so I do owe them the time anyway for that little bit. Anyway, so Wednesday morning, I'm off to do my regular Wednesday clean. Um... Yeah, that's it. I, um, <laughs> if you know my channel well enough, you'll know that I really like to do frugal hacks and DIY hacks that save me money, and then I try and make them even cheaper. And I enjoy doing that. I like finding ways around things. I especially like it if it means I can make something, if I can do something from scratch because I love doing DIY stuff. I love fixing stuff, um, doing little hacks and all sorts of bits and pieces. So I will always go out of my way to try and do something that's a cheap hack, but try and do it even cheaper. Um, but uh, I, <laughs> it's a video I did recently about me bottling fruit and a few of you <laughs> were a bit annoyed with me for not following some very simple, potentially simple rules about it, about, you know, heating jars to a certain temperature, not contaminating your water, I don't quite know what that means, um, 
I mean, I've been bottling fruit like that for for three years. I have fruit that's bottled from two years ago, which is still fine. So <coughs> I don't think there's any contamination going on. I've eaten it and I'm still here, but didn't have any adverse reactions. Maybe I've just got a cast iron stomach. I don't know. Anyway, so what you will notice when I am doing my little frugal challenges like bottling fruit is I will try to find an even cheaper way so when I first started bottling fruit one of the rules that I did follow was heating the jars to a very high temperature first and I used to put them in the oven but of course electric is now expensive ovens are luxury items now and so I stopped doing that in favour of just I put a drop of bleach in the jar, I give it a good wash through and a rinse and when I make the sugar syrup it's at boiling temperature so everything's being sealed at boiling point so I don't know why that wouldn't work and it does work for me so I just carry on with that, fine by me. So that's my cheaper than cheap hack um, and I've just had my next energy bill through and I have used my oven more than normal this month I've done a lot more baking because I have been not letting myself buy ultra processed stuff in the shops I've not been buying any bread I've not been allowing myself to buy any cheap cake or biscuits or anything like that so I've been baking more at home because there's less in but I also need to use up some of the bottled fruit that I have because I've added to it so I have bottles and bottles and bottles of the stuff and I'm using it in rotation. So I have been using the oven probably once a week more than usual. Normally I would only batch cook in my oven a couple of times a month but I've been cooking, I've probably done uh, let, let's say four more uses this month this uh, calendar month for my when my bills are due which is on the 11th um, and I've done my meter reads just done my meter reads and I've used six more units of electric this month than last month which isn't going to work out to an enormous amount of money but every penny counts so I think it's going to cost me say an extra two pounds two pound fifty something like that that's only a that's only a guesstimate i need to wait for my bill to come through which will be tomorrow and when it does i'll put it up there because by the time i've edited this my bill would have come through um but if i was doing that over the course of the year you know that really makes a difference to my energy bills and i run very very low energy bills my direct debit every month is 40 pounds so I spend less than £40 per month on average over the course of a year for my gas and electric. Uh, most, most of which of course goes on the standing charge, um, the rip-off that is the standing charge. So I use very, very little energy. Uh, I generally only cook on my gas hob, which is cheaper than the electric. And I try to use as little electric as I possibly can in my general day-to-day -day life. I use everything on restriction. I only do full loads in the washing machine because that costs electric, soap powder and water. And with the oven, I only use it, yeah, normally I would only use it a couple of times a month and I've just been doing a bit more recently, but I need to cut back on that again because I don't want to have to be paying an extra two or three pounds every month for my electric, especially as in the autumn, the bills will go up again because they need to make sure they get their money. So, yeah, so you just, you just, you're just gonna have to face the fact that when I am doing a frugal thing, I will not always follow the rules and I will try to make it a bit more frugal than it was to start with because I am all about the hacks. I enjoy it. I'm not doing it because I want to live in poverty. I don't feel like I live in poverty. People keep saying this to me. Why would you want to live a frugal life? Why would you want to live like a poor person? I don't feel like I live like a poor person. I have all my needs. If your idea of being poor is not going on holiday three times a year, not having the latest phone, 
not having rubbishy TV subscription packages, then you're doing it wrong. I have all my needs. I don't need TV subscriptions. I don't need the latest phone handset. Uh, I, you know, I have a roof over my head. I have more food than I need. I need to deal with that situation. Um, I don't feel like I go without. I'm not big on shopping. My shopping haul days are over. I don't get enjoyment from it anymore, really. I've done all that. Um, I don't feel a need to go on holiday because my work-life balance means that every day is easy. <laughs> that will really annoy some people. Yeah, I, have, I like my work-life balance. I never feel like I've done a full day's work and yet I always, I'm kind of always working and I'm earning more than I spend. So why would I need to do any more? And uh, yeah, so uh, the way these people part, are you serious? My God, okay. Let's see if I can pop myself into this space. It's got to be possible. I'm only a little one. The problem is they've all parked up on the curbs, which Am I going to slot into this gap? How do we feel about that? Yeah, we can do that. People park like idiots. You know, if I came up to a space, instead of parking and leaving a massive gap, or not quite a massive gap, a gap that's big enough for a small car, and not anybody else. Honestly, it's good to one good at parking. Parallel parking queen. There we go. Nobody's blocked in. <laughs> Honestly, some people. Anyway. Oh, that elderflower bush has still got tons of flowers on it. I don't have the room. I do not have the room for any more elderflower. I've still got my five bottles in the fridge. Two will go with me down south, so that means I have three to guzzle myself. And I did have some the other day, actually, and it's a really good batch this year. It's got a lovely fizz on it. The flavour is just spot on. I did a good one this year. So, yeah, so get used to it, I'm afraid. Um, my frugal hacks are often more frugal than frugal and that's just because I like doing it I get a bit of a buzz from it it's just the way I am I'd never do anything that was going to make me sick or anything that was dangerous um, I'm not putting my life in jeopardy or anything like that so you know Thank you for the comment, but um, <laughs> fine, thank you very much. Uh, right, so I think that probably fills up this vlog. I'll have a look and see. I've kind of lost track of what I've got in this week because I've been all over the place. I think that's probably it. So thank you for watching, as always. Uh, like and subscribe, as everybody says, all that sort of thing. I do have... Um, coffee if you want to donate or you can go directly through PayPal if you use the friends and family one not the business one because they'll somebody said they take somewhere like 30 percent off you otherwise which is ridiculous uh, or you can do the super thanks on YouTube every penny counts uh, it's income for me now this is definitely income for me so thank you and I'll speak to you soon bye bye